For SpaceX, each flight is not simply a task, it's also a valuable experience for them to do better in future missions. Musk and SpaceX have clearly shown this over the past seven months. They learned a lot from the first Starship orbital test flight, thereby creating upgrades and changes to make strides in the recent Starship mission. One of those changes is on the engine system. Thanks to the great efforts of talented engineers, it has brought the first positive results. No engine shut off or stopped working in the first minutes. This is really a new stride for SpaceX in the Starship project. However, there are still some problems that appeared with the engine after the separation process. Those problems also seem to be quite serious and need to be resolved soon to help the next mission become more perfect and successful. So what are those problems in particular, and how did they affect this Starship flight? Stay tuned as we dive into this and more in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Perhaps most of us still remember what happened during Starship's first integrated test flight back in April. One of the most prominent problems was the engine failure. Some engines were not activated after Starship lifted off, and some others also stopped working during the flight. Those failures with the engine in the beginning caused a lot of impact on the flight's performance. However, those problems won't stop the progress of Elon Musk and SpaceX's talented engineers. The engine the engine failure that occurred during the April flight was promptly investigated and resolved by SpaceX. The root causes of the failure were related to the manifold system, fuel pump system, hot air duct, hydraulic power unit system, and ignition system. These components either malfunctioned or failed to withstand the extreme conditions of the engine, resulting in fuel leakage, engine shutdown, and incomplete ignition. In this section, we're going to focus on the manifold system, fuel pump system, and hot air duct. These parts were exposed to high levels of heat and pressure from the engine, which caused them to crack and leak fuel. This in turn led to the shutdown of one of the engines during flight. Additionally, the hydraulic power unit system and the igniter did not perform as expected, preventing some of the engines from being activated during liftoff. These were the main factors that contributed to the engine failure on the first flight. To address these issues, SpaceX made several improvements to its engine design. The manifold, fuel pump system, and hot air duct were reinforced with stronger materials and better insulation to prevent cracking and leakage. The hydraulic power unit system was replaced with a new electric TVC system that improved the control and reliability of the engine. Engines. The ignition system was also enhanced to ensure consistent and complete ignition of all engines. These improvements paid off in the last flight where all 33 engines of Super Heavy were successfully activated and operated smoothly. The sight of 33 engines working together in harmony was impressive and satisfying for the viewers, as well as a stark contrast to the previous flight. Moreover, the stable and sufficient thrust provided by the engines enabled a flawless flight up until the separation process. The first two minutes of the flight were beyond expectations and set the stage for the subsequent success of the separation and hot staging mechanisms. After the flight, the engine was one of the upgrades that received many compliments. It was also one of the factors SpaceX mentioned in the congratulatory tweet they posted on X after the flight. However, the problem with the engine seems to have not been completely resolved. The launch of Starship S-25 and Super Heavy B-9 was a spectacular event, but it also revealed some serious problems with the engines. After 2 minutes and 39 seconds of flight, only 3 of the 33 engines on Super Heavy were still firing, while the rest had shut down as planned. The separation of Starship and Super Heavy went smoothly, and 2 seconds later, at 2 minutes and 50 seconds, 10 of the middle engines on Super Heavy reignited to join the three inner engines in controlling the descent. However, one of the middle engines failed to restart, and soon after, more than half of the engines also shut down. At 3 minutes and 18 seconds, all engines on Super Heavy were off, and 2 seconds later, it exploded in midair. This shows that the engine performance of Super Heavy was not stable after separation. The failure of one engine to restart and the subsequent shutdown of others prevented Super Heavy from executing its landing maneuver. This is a major issue because Starship is designed to reuse both. The plan for this flight was to land Super Heavy softly in the Gulf of Mexico to test its landing capabilities and prepare for the future use of the Mechazilla system. The gimbal motors that steer the engines are crucial for this purpose. However, both Super Heavy and Starship exploded before landing. This means that neither 
stage demonstrated its ability to land safely. Therefore, it'll take a while before we can witness the Mechazilla system catching the Super Heavy and Starship in midair. We may have to wait until at least the next flight to see that feat. The explosion problem was not only caused by engine issues, but also by other factors such as fuel leaks. Nevertheless, the engine issues were one of the main reasons why Super Heavy's mission ended prematurely. For the time being, up until the next flight, everything's going to be extremely busy for SpaceX's engineers. They'll need to find the causes of the problems with the engine, they'll need to help the engine operate as stable as possible, avoiding situations like the engine being shut down or unable to be activated. SpaceX also needs to pay attention to the gimbal engines, which play an extremely important role, as I've mentioned before, in controlling and landing stages. At least it needs to do well in the tasks of landing into the ocean before thinking about further goals like landing with the Mechazilla chopstick arms. Landing with Mechazilla would be a miracle, but it'll also pose many risks. The engines not only have to operate well and stably, but they also have to work perfectly and accurately to land in a small range with little to no margin for error between the launch tower's chopsticks. Changes and improvements will even have to take place comprehensively, not only with the current engine, SpaceX also needs to make changes and improvements with the new engine versions, Raptor 3. This is the engine version SpaceX is developing and testing to apply to future prototypes. The experiences of Starship's two flights are the basis for SpaceX engineers to make appropriate changes to the future engine version. They'll probably need to speed up those tasks soon, because important deadlines are approaching. One of the closest and most important deadlines for Starship is NASA's Artemis program. SpaceX will use HLS Starship, the moon landing variant, to land the first crew on the moon after more than half a century. The Artemis 3 mission will be scheduled for late 2025 or early 2026, meaning SpaceX only has two years left to conduct upgrades and testing to achieve the necessary reliability before participating in these important missions. Let's wait and see what they'll do to meet this important deadline. But that is a matter for the future. As for the last flight, although there are still many problems, it can be said that SpaceX is making positive progress. Every flight will be a valuable experience for SpaceX. Taking advantage of experiences and recognizing problems to change and do better, that is the key to success. SpaceX carried out this process well during the past seven months. Advances in engines, successes with the separation process, and the launch system are the clearest evidence. Although there are still some problems that have not been completely resolved, we still have to admit that everything is gradually getting better. And we can't forget to mention that to become the largest and most powerful aerospace company in the world, Musk and SpaceX have gone through many difficulties and challenges. Those challenges are even harsher now than before. But in the end, they overcame. So let's continue to put our trust in Musk and his company as we eagerly await the next crazy steps that they'll take on the road to Mars. Well, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section down below because your feedback is very important to us and helps us make better videos for you. So for that, once again, we thank you so much and we hope to see you again next time.